Hi everyone and welcome to this section of the online course. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about piloting the survey and why it's really important. So I've managed to grab some of my colleagues from NVAM, um, we're here in Rome, and basically I'm just going to interview them, ask them how as NVAM we've used piloting to try and make our surveys better. So guys, can you introduce yourselves properly? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Jen, I'm a food security analyst. Hi, my name is Sakjin. I'm also a food security analyst on the MBAM team. Hi, my name is Gaurav. I'm the lead data scientist on the team. Okay, Gaurav, you're up first. Sorry. No. <laughs> Can you explain what piloting the survey actually means? Sure. Um, let me think of an analogy. So, uh, say you're building a car. I, I know no one builds, actually builds cars. That, at least not too many people. Um, but the idea is you're putting all these very complicated parts together. And in our case, you have the questionnaire, the sample frame, um, the technology that's being used, right? IVR, SMS, um, obviously a mobile network operator, maybe a call center, and then the, the math, right? You have the weighting techniques, you have how you're actually gonna do the estimations. So these are all really complex things and, and you're putting them all together to do this survey. And if you've ever seen a, a actual engine turn on for the first time, uh, what happens is that it backfires, the entire thing shuts down, and you have to probably replace a few parts. Um, Great. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, you know, not everything, though, ends badly. So, but the, the question is why, right? And it's because things are never perfect the first time around. And a mechanic, they will tune that engine and, you know, take many hours to do that so it runs properly. And, you know, they go to school for many years to do that. And so it's the same thing for anything that has many moving parts, even if it's a figurative in our case, right? And so the first time you run a survey, the results are not going to make sense. That's really encouraging. Yeah. Um, so why does this actually happen? Like we've already been through in this course, like exactly what to do with designing your questionnaire, exactly what to do with designing your sample. How could my perfect survey go quite so wrong? Well, the big question your pilot tries to answer is, did you design your survey right? Um, most often that's just not true because reality is weird, you know? Um, so one of the biggest things that goes wrong is uh, we underestimate the finesse of the enumerator and the operator, right? Like they're the wheels of the car. They're the persons that actually have contact with the respondent. And to actually figure out what's the most neutral and, and the clearest way to ask the question, you know, take some practice, right? And until they have that practice, uh, there's just going to be all kinds of bias and just a lot of noise. And then, you know, we, we've, of course, we've talked about a lot of the parts of this, this chain already, you know, the net network operator, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but then one of the other things that can really go wrong is that the respondent, uh, well, either they don't respond, so certain demographic groups just kind of disappear off the planet, or uh, they just don't like the mode, you know, that, 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 that happens, you know, they're just like, oh, you know what, I, I just hate SMS. Great. Yeah. So is there an example you can share with us about sure. when this has happened? Sure. Actually, let me give you the opposite example where, the, where we thought they would hate SMS. So, um, so in Liberia, we had every reason to think that IVR would be superior. Um, so first, first and foremost, uh, Liberia, the literacy rate is 42%. So you know, not, not too high. Most people can't even read an SMS. And uh, and then the languages that people are most comfortable in, uh, they don't have written scripts. So at least with IVR, we thought, okay, they can call up, mm -hmm. and then you know they get like a, a menu of options as to what language they want to take the survey in. And then you know we already knew it's not going to be very good, right? I mean, most of the network coverage is in Montserrado. There's a lot of you know rural people in Liberia that we knew would be missing. But anyways, we thought it would be better. Uh, but. You know, when people were entering in the response, so let's say we ask, what's the price of palm oil, right? And it should be a thousand for a liter. Uh, instead of entering one thousand, uh, they'll be like, okay, uh, one one zero zero one zero zero or one 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 zero zero zero. We'd get all sorts of random responses, and that's just because they didn't know how many times they entered in one and how many times they entered in zero. And actually, being able to look at your response made a huge difference. And it was even the same for our CSI questions. Uh, you know, they, like zero would be repeat the question, and maybe they, they thought they hit one, but they actually hit zero, so the question repeated itself. 
So you just get frustrated and be like, okay, one, 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 one. And we get all these flatlining responses that made no sense. So hence we just were like, okay, screw it, let's just go with SMS. Okay, right. You know? I yeah. now see why it's necessary to have a pilot. Oh, you're good. Glad I could get some light. <laughs> good, but <laughs> what are the really important points someone needs to consider before they do their pilot set? Um, the big thing is that, you know, this is the stress test, right? Like you are not here to, uh, to make sure, to validate every little uh, piece of the design, but you validate the parts where you know it's going to get difficult. Um, Going back to our car analogy, you know, driving a car straight down the road, no brakes, no turning, you're not going to really figure out if it's working properly. But, you know, if you brake and the brake fails, you'll probably get hurt. So, um, so, so our, our survey, you know, you make sure you get the respondents that are hard to get, right? Like the, the female head of the households, the, the most food insecure, the most vulnerable, right? Um, you know, make sure you're reaching those rural areas. Um, make sure the, the difficult to understand questions are getting the kinds of responses that, that you want or that, that you expect to get, right? Um, those are, those are the, the, the necessary parts of piloting the survey. And you, know, you don't need the full amount of samples to do that. You know, half, even less is usually sufficient. Uh, it's only you that's gonna be looking at it and making sure that you did the job that you thought you were doing. Great, anything else you wanted to add? No, I think I've talked long enough. So maybe I should okay. turn over to my colleagues. <laughs> so guys, food security analysis, analysts. Jan, we're going to start with you. Has an MBAM team member, have there been any examples of where you've piloted a survey and you've had to make a major design change? Yeah, so a good question. I think uh, a rock is a good example of that. Okay. So. Um, in Iraq, we really did modify our initial design to better meet country office needs. Um, we started with a nationwide survey, a nationwide household survey, working with a mobile network operator in Iraq. Um, and our sample was representative at the government level, which is the biggest administrative district in Iraq. And this was helpful for getting an overview of the food security situation on a national level. But what the country office really needed was precise information about the most vulnerable areas in Iraq, um, often the areas with the highest concentration of IDPs or internally displaced people. Okay, which your survey didn't get. Well, we just weren't getting enough information on that because we were at just such sort of a, a high level and we really needed more information, really detailed information on on the hot spots okay. uh, in the country. What do you mean by a hot spot? So a hot spot is an area with high food insecurity or where we think, an area that we think might be at risk for high food insecurity. Okay, so did you then just do surveys based in these areas? So exactly, what we decided to do was do a, a monthly survey that could complement this national survey where we worked with the country office to identify sort of 10 hotspot districts in Iraq that had enough network coverage to be able to do a household survey. And then we really focused on that, getting household information on a monthly basis. Great, so then this information was much more useful for the country office? Yeah, it, it really helped be able to better allocate food assistance with that, that information. Cool, um, thanks. <laughs> so, Jin, you're uh, up. Yeah. So, Gaurav's spoken about the mode, <coughs> Jen's spoken about any geographic problems. Are there any other areas in terms of our survey design where you've had to reassess the initial design? Sure, uh, I can talk about how we changed the questionnaire after the initial pilot, and I think the base, best place uh, to talk about would be Malawi. Mm -hmm. So in Malawi, we're uh, tracking food security uh, nationwide, and uh, we also were interested in asking uh, wealth indicator questions to them so that we would know that uh, how different groups, uh, different wealth groups would be uh, reacting or coping, uh, negatively coping in the food and security situation. So, so we tried asking questions such as how many people normally sleep in your home or uh, how many rooms in your home do people normally sleep in? So those kind of questions we were trying to get that uh, pinpointed. But uh, however, that it did not correlate so well with the food security indicators such as uh, RCSI, which is a reduced coping strategy index. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started exploring other options. So uh, we ended up uh, trying the wall type question, which is, uh, we are, we're asking people on, uh, on their wall type of their house. What is it made out of? 
Okay. So such as, is it cement or is it uh, baked brick or is it unbaked brick or is it mud? So baked uh, mud being the worst of household and uh, cement being the better, uh, best of household. So it turns out that uh, it correlates quite well. Like, so it has an acceptable correlation, I would say. And, uh, and uh, it kind of fits with the, uh, our intuition that, uh, that the worst, worst of household would be the most seriously uh, negative coping not sure if I got that right, but uh, yeah, negatively coping in a most harsh manner, right? Okay. So, okay. so then, uh, then we had a good picture. Then we uh, started asking that questions all the rounds, and then we have a good trend on how things are developing uh, in terms of each wealth group. Perfect, because presumably this is the kind of information WFP really needs to target its existence. Exactly. Exactly. Great. And what about like any other? parts of the questionnaire like we don't just ask demographics so we talked about food security questions so let's talk about market questions that we okay. ask uh, so in Zambia we have an in-house call center uh, in which uh, we uh, place caddy calls which are computer assisted telephone interviews uh, to the market traders so what we ask is uh, food prices on on different food commodities so what we tried out is to uh, unify the unit of measurement to one kilogram so this worked in Malawi because all the traders in Malawi were um, comfortable with one kilogram, the unit, and so they were able to give us the you know, right prices. However, it turns out in Zambia, uh, people were not so comfortable. They were only comfortable with the unit of measurement that they sell at, so which is uh, 50 kilogram bags or 90 kilogram bags or um, meta, which I believe is um, five liters or one cup. So we actually, uh, according to what questions, what food commodity we're looking at, we uh, implemented different kind of unit of measurement. Of course, this meant uh, more work from our, our side, such as uh, coding the data entry tools or uh, cleaning the da data more, um, more rigorously, so to say, after uh, before doing the analysis. So on, on and on. But uh, however, um, we definitely got so much uh, much better data. So uh, we're quite happy about uh, yeah, introducing these uh, diverse units of measurements. Perfect, which yeah. is essentially what we're after, better data. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, yeah. guys. You're Sorry welcome, guys. for taking up your time. And I hope this has actually been useful, like having some concrete examples of why piloting the survey is so important. So yeah, thanks for watching this video.